Hello students, I am Dr. Tanmay Vishash and welcome to all in my channel Chemistry the Mystery of Molecules. Today's topic of discussion is this MCQ in front of you. I request you student, please pause the video. Read the problem carefully, try by yourself and whatever answer you get, please write in the comment box. Because remember one statement, self-evaluation is essential for improvement and for that purpose you must try. And I, I will be very happy if you write some words supporting your explanation or answer. Okay, I believe you have tried, so it's my turn to give you the answer. Now, if you look at this molecule, this is actually an alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound and it is treated with different means three batches of reagent. So, let's learn the mechanism stepwise. So, if you look at this mechanism, the first reagent is actually a Gilman reagent. So, in this case, this methyl group acts as a nucleophile. Okay, so this is delta minus actually this is not that much ionic compared to Grignard or alkyl lithium okay and that's why this reagent selectively this methyl group attacks to the beta position because because of this resonance if you look at this alpha beta carbon means this carbonyl compound this is the positive means this center is electrophilic it is true that this carbon is also electrophilic but this carbon is relatively hard electrophilic because it's directly attached to oxygen close but this carbon is relatively softer and the carbon ion is also softer means this uh, dimethyl lithium cuprate that's why attack will happen here and it will open in this way so ultimately it will produce a lithium enolate type derivative fine and these enolate reacts with TMSCL means trimethyl silyl chloride and we know this reagent is actually a enolate trapping agent and by the have already discussed many lectures so please visit for better understanding so it will substitute this silicon and produce this silyl enol ether okay I have already discussed this thing and we know silyl enol ethers are remember student this is a very important statement they are mild nucleophilic okay why they are nucleophilic because they have a canonical form i am showing here so this is osi me3 this can have a canonical form means this lone pair of it can give here it can go so in this way it will produce a canonical form means the carbon will have minus and this oxygen si me3 this oxygen is carrying the positive charge so it is true that the nucleophilicity is observed because of this carbon but charge separation is contributing lesser and that's why this is a milder nucleophile because in resonance if one canonical form is associated with charge separation then the contribution of that canonical form to overall electronic distribution of the molecule is less. So this is mild nucleophile. So it directly cannot attack, it directly cannot attack here it pushes and it cannot attack this carbonyl not possible and for that purpose one Lewis acid or better to say strong Lewis acid needed like titanium 4 plus what titanium 4 plus does it coordinates with this carbonyl oxygen or better to say aldehyde oxygen now you can have a question that sir there is also oxygen in SiMe3 group why titanium don't coordinate to this SiMe3 group this is because student if you look at this oxygen silicon SiMe3 bond it is a sigma bond it's true but there is some other stabilization factor also what do i mean this oxygen has filled p orbital two electrons and silicon has energetically accessible vacant d orbital and they can overlap means this silicon is capable to donate its electron density sorry this oxygen is capable to donate its electron density to the vacant d orbital of silicon so the electron density on this oxygen atom is relatively less so that's why titanium will prefer to bind this carbonyl oxygen because carbonyl oxygen is another canonical form means it can open up so the canonical form is ph o minus c plus so in this case the ox electron density on this oxygen atom is more not only that this oxygen also has a canonical form means here it donates its electron density and increases the electron means it donates its electron and increases the electron density in this carbon means this enolate carbon here 
So from this thing you can understand that carbonyl oxygen is more electron rich so it will coordinate with titanium 4 plus and after this Lewis acid base coordination the electron density or electrophilicity of this aldehyde carbon increases. I mean it get more reactive that is why this silyl enol ether can perform these attack here not previous case was not possible but this case it is possible. So in the next step what happens it opens up and ultimately produces this and by the way these remains coordinated to this titanium 4 plus ok. Now after hydrolysis so this part get O minus get converted into OH and this part got broken why because oxygen silicon bond is stable because this back donation are normal but when the oxygen is carrying a positive charge after this nucleophilic attack this silicon oxygen bond is not that much stable. So, during the aqueous acidic workup or even workup in terms of fluoride, aqueous acid, aqueous base or fluoride mediated workup result in hydrolysis of silyl, silyl trimethyl, silyl ether derivative and ultimately produces this beta, this is alpha beta hydroxy carbonyl. And from this understanding you can say this is similar like a aldol type condensation. Yes, it is true, its name is Mukayama aldol condensation. Now, what are the name reaction associated with this process? First one is Michael addition, carbon ion addition in beta position, Michael addition. I have already discussed senile inyl ether formation, trapping of this enolate with trimethyl silyl chloride. I have already discussed dedicated lecture. Third one is Lewis acid base interaction and activation of carbonyl. Fine. And fourth is the Mukayama aldol addition. So, this is the overall discussion. So, what is the right answer? right answer of this problem is option B. Okay. Now question if it is given in your exam less than 30 seconds how can you solve? First of all you need to understand that this is a Gilman reagent where it attacks softer carbon or beta carbon. If I say this word then option D and option C gone because in you know, option D 1 2 addition carbonyl carbon not possible and here obviously not possible no double bond was there ok so not possible this option gone rest competition between A and B and this is called student process of elimination you have eliminated unnecessary options now option A and B see in case of option A carbon ion or enolate here means this carbon not possible gone you do not need to think other also so what is left this this is the answer. So, but I student always I recommend please read the basic chemistry properly do not follow the tricks at the beginning first read then do practice and later on follow the tricks then you will get success I mean good ranks ok. So, in conclusion what you have learned today that Gilman reagent is R2CULI reagent and it is actually a softer nucleophile or carbon ion this R, R part. Now, this R2CULI since it is softer it attacks the beta carbon of alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound. Finally, this enolate could be trapped as silyl enol ether formation and this silyl enol ether is milder nucleophile that is why it cannot react directly with any carbonyl compound but it reacts with carbonyl compound in presence of strong Lewis acid like titanium 4 plus. And finally, this titanium 4 plus mediated silyl enol ether addition to aldehyde is called Mukayama aldol reaction, which produces finally the beta hydroxy carbonyl compound after the work. So, this is the end of this discussion. I believe this video may be useful. If it is, please help this channel to grow. And if possible, please visit my another channel, Climate and Chemistry, where I upload global warming and climate change related videos. So, thanks. Thank you again. Stay happy. Stay blessed. See you in my next video. Bye bye.